Good morning, everybody. Today is July 8th, 2013. This is a yet another test show using the new approach to doing the shows. Since I have been hired by a UK-based broadcasting company to host a show on Wednesday nights, more information about that as we get closer to the date of our first show on that network, which will be, I believe, the first Wednesday in August. Now, there have been uh, a couple of things happening around the old website corral with our websites, Zamistan, our homepage that anybody can use, Cellini TV and usamichigan.com along with all of our other websites we use a company called Cloudflare and what they do is they accelerate your website by um, um, caching your website and um, compressing everything involved with the website and everything and that's the reason why a lot of sites on the internet now come up really really fast and we've all gotten used to it but anyways the uh, company Cloudflare. We use them to accelerate our sites, and it appears that they've taken a crapper over the past 72 hours. We're getting, uh, this website is not available, the server is down, um, um, 500 errors, internal server errors, and everything else. This is probably due to one, another one of those famous Cliff High data holds that have been in the WebBot and Alta reports since, uh, I believe, 2000. 2005 or so, whenever he started doing them, he knew about these uh, data holes, and we've all known about it, and now they're here. And it's probably due to the ever-popular DDoS attack between the Internet companies. I have made, <coughs> and this is um, some really fancy pants, really cool stuff that I have been doing here in the broadcast studio. And that is because of my um, medical condition. I can't be in hot weather anymore. And it's summertime, so the weather is hot. And rather than running the central air conditioning unit here in the uh, facilities, because, well, it takes a honking bunch of electricity to run it, and that means you get a honking big electric bill. And these days, nobody can afford uh, a big honking electric bill especially with the way the uh, electricity prices are going up, but that's another discussion for another day. But what I've done is I've started using uh, one of those cooler air conditioners. You take uh, yourself a cooler and you fill it up with some ice and put some ducting and uh, fans on it and whatnot, and it becomes an air conditioner. What I've done is I have been experimenting with this for the past... Uh, probably month. I've used uh, regular large coolers with uh, furnace ductwork attached to them. I've used uh, styrofoam coolers. And I have found that the best cooler to use is one of those um, Omaha Steaks coolers because they are over an inch thick in the styrofoam. They're excellent coolers. And I have developed a way to make the ice last 40% longer. I'm going to be doing an entire show around that. Probably either uh, tonight, the 8th of uh, July, or tomorrow, the 9th of July. The next item that I've got for you is that one of the survivors of the big 777 crash out in San Francisco has been prevented from talking about it by the police at the airport. There's a link to the video at the show notes, which you can see at ussamichigan.com. Pardon me for a moment. <coughs> As you can hear, my voice is getting a little bit rough, and that's uh, perfectly normal with my uh, medical condition. Now, these people really should do their press stuff at their homes or on private property, so they cannot be um, whisked away by the police. Doing it at the airport, which is somebody else's property, is a really badass idea, as in dumb. People simply have to learn, start learning, guerrilla tactics to do this kind of stuff. Maybe you should have done a YouTube video and put it up on YouTube. A bunch of people would have downloaded it and spread it around after it got deleted. There's a uh, link to the video right here, right there, right there. And don't worry if it gets taken down. We have a copy and we'll make it available. 
The next item <coughs> involves jobs. Pardon me for just a minute while I hit the cough button. Okay, I am back. <coughs> it appears to this commentator, that would be me, Bill Zame, that the central government of the former United States of America is, at this point, following the Greek model of decline. What I've done is I've looked at all of the different uh, models of decline that are being used around the world. You can uh, uh, attribute this to the central bankers, the evil Federal Reserve, uh, the Bernanke, um, the uh, New World Order, the global elites, the Bilderbergers, the Illuminati, whoever the hell you want to give the blame to doesn't matter to me. But it has become obvious, to me anyways, that we are in fact looking at a purposeful global decline in economies. As these people uh, use the Keynesian model, which is the stupidest thing in the world if you ask me. At any rate, after looking at all the different models of decline used around the world from uh, Europe as a whole, to the Tunisian model, to the Greek model, the Spanish model, the Brazilian model, etc., I have come to the conclusion that the USSA is using the throw crap at the people model, which of course is followed by the we can't afford to throw crap at the people anymore model, which naturally leads to the protest model, which leads to a governmental collapse followed by the probable pure socialism model and the removal of the Constitution here in the former United States of America. Now the questions we have to ask ourselves at this point, and we damn well better do it before the second step of we're throwing free crap, free crap from everybody, are as follows. And remember, this could take 10 years, this could take 5 years, this could take till next week. All it takes is that first domino being pushed one sixteenth of an inch to make all the other dominoes fall. It could happen in Europe, it could happen in South America, it could happen in Asia, it doesn't re in Australia. It doesn't really matter where it happens. The dominoes will begin to fall when the first one falls. Even with all of these problems <coughs> that we're seeing around the world, from uh, Greece to Europe, the UK, Japan, uh, the problems in China, and Brazil, and every place else, it's still not enough to precipitate the entire global collapse of the entire system. And can you imagine how bad it's going to be when this actually does collapse, given that, look what happened in Greece, even that wasn't enough to tip over all the dominoes economically in the world. That is uh, some very scary stuff. Here's the questions that we need to ask ourselves. Are there still enough people in the United States to re-engage the original Constitution when this collapses? Would the citizens of the former United States of America have the wherewithal to actually conduct mass protests in Washington, D.C.? At the end of the free crap model, would there be enough residual money available to allow the masses to travel to Washington? And the point about that is, is we don't have the typical European or Asian mass transit systems. We Sure, we've got Amtrak and Greyhound buses, but that's about it. And to take a train or a Greyhound bus from California to Washington, D.C. is going to take days to do the trip, unless you fly by an airplane. And once the powers that be figure out that people are flying by airplane into Washington, D.C. to conduct mass protests, <laughs> you're going to be on the no-fly list, pal, faster than you can say, this is going to be really bad. Next question. If not, if there is not enough residual money available to allow the masses to travel to Washington, would state-by-state -state protests be enough to conduct a change? If the state-by-state -state protest model is used, would that lead to A, state-generated free crap, or B, state pressure on the central government to start this change? And I'm going to add another one to it, C, would the pressure from the states be enough? And would there be enough states that want a re-engaged original constitution and small government model? Would there be enough states to pressure the central government to do that? That is the big question. The reason why I'm talking about all of this is that there's a fellow by the name of Mike Snyder 
who appears to write for economiccollapse.com. I believe that's actually his website, economiccollapse.com. And again, all of these links are available at ussamichigan.com. He has written a telling article about um, good jobs. And uh, he has written this on July 7th of 2013. Let's read a little bit about what Michael is saying. Trying to find a job today can be incredibly, uh, an incredibly frustrating experience. I know from personal experience, my wife has been on the job hunt recently. Most of the jobs that are available seem to pay very little. Again, I can attest to that personally. And there is intense competition for just about any job that is open. But it wasn't always like this. In this economic environment, a single nationwide hiring event conducted by model McDonald's, of all places, resulted in one million job applications, and only a small percentage of those applicants were actually hired. Our economy simply does not produce enough jobs for everyone anymore, and the percentage of good jobs continues to decline, which means that it's getting harder to find a job that will enable you to support a family, and a lot of people end up doing jobs that they are massively overqualified for. One thing that we've seen in recent years is an explosion of temporary workers in America. And again, I can attest to this personally. In cities all across the country, workers are standing on street corners, line up in alleys, or wait in neon-lit beauty salons for rickety vans to whisk them off to warehouses miles away. Very nice prose. I have not seen that personally. I do not know if that is true, but it may very well be. This is not Mexico, Guatemala, or the Honduras. This is in Chicago, New Jersey, and Boston. Those of us that live in more rural areas do not see this on a day-to-day -day basis. The people that are the people here in the United States, the former United States of America, are not day laborers looking for an odd job from a passing contractor. They are regular employees of temporary agencies working in the supply chain of many of America's largest companies. Many get by on minimum wage. They almost never get benefits and have little opportunity for advancement. He's also come up with 15 signs of the um, bad job market and, as a result, the declining economy of this country. Number one, the number of part-time workers in the United States just hit a brand new all-time high. Number two, only 47% of adults have a full-time job. Number three, the economy created 200,000 jobs in June and the number of full-time jobs actually decreased. That's a big number, folks. There are now 2.7 million temporary workers in the U.S. One out of every 10 jobs in the U.S. is now filled by a temporary agency. The U.S. economy has actually lost manufacturing jobs for four consecutive months. The official unemployment rate has been at 7.5% or higher for 54 months in a row. How long does it take for it to be classified as a depression? I've been waiting for 2008 for one of these smart clowns in Washington, D.C. or New York or someplace else to call this a depression. Why don't we just go ahead, <coughs> get off our fat asses, and call this for what it is, a depression. According to one survey, 76% of all Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. One out of every four Americans has a job that pays less than $10 an hour. High-paying manufacturing jobs continue to be shipped overseas. Today, the United States actually has a higher percentage of workers doing low-wage work than any other industrialized nation. The U.S. economy continues to trade good-paying jobs for low-paying jobs. Back in 1980, less than 30% of all jobs in the United States were low-income. Today, more than 40% are low income. At this point, an astounding 53% of all Americans make less than 30000 a year. According to a study that was released by the Center for Economic and Policy Research, only 24.6% of all jobs in the United States are qualify as good jobs. 
there is a link at USSAMichigan.com for today's show notes. That is a link to the PDF study at the CEPR website. Here are their three qualifications for a high-paying job or a good job. The job must pay at least eighteen fifty an hour. The equivalent median hourly pay for American workers back in 1979 if you adjust for inflation. In other words, if you're making a median hourly wage in 1979, today you have to make eighteen fifty an hour just to stay even. The job must provide access to employer-sponsored health insurance and the employer must pay at least some portion of the cost. The job must provide access to an employer-sponsored retirement plan. All of this is absolutely heartbreaking. Let's look at the PDF. This is the PDF from the uh, um, what is it? The uh, Center for uh, Center for Economic and Policy Research, a quote-unquote nonpartisan group. What we see here in Figure One is the share of good jobs from 1979 to 2001. And you can see right here, this is the beginning point, right here it's 1979. Um, the light blue is female, the dark blue is everybody, and the medium blue is for men. And you can see right here the share of good jobs, 1979 to 2011. Just under 40% of men had what are called good paying jobs in 1979, just a little bit over 10% of women had good paying jobs in 1979, and the actual combined was around 28%. Today, you can see that this has, in fact, declined over the years. In 2000, there was a spike in men and all people, and not so much in the females, of good jobs. You can see that it has declined. It's down to about 30% of men, but women have actually increased in good jobs. Here is the share of bad jobs. You can see that it has increased. Bad jobs mean part-time, no health care, lower than the median wage. In other words, really crappy jobs that you take just to get by. You can see that that has increased for both men and women since 1979. This is not good news. And as I said, you can download this PDF and read it at the Center for Economic and Policy Research website, Making Jobs Good. This is by John Schmidt and Janelle Jones. It was published in April of 2013. That would be this year. They are based out of Washington, D.C., and their website is CEPR.net, CEPR.net. Don't hesitate, go there today. And um, you get your acknowledgments, your executive summary, and everything else. And that is about this, about that. This is about it for this episode of Surrounded by Idiots. Have a nice day.